happen when you give a young black girl growing up in an area that is underserved access to a computer with the internet, teach her how to build technology products, and expose her to black women in tech? What if she goes on to be an engineer at Apple? Well, that girl is me. If we want to get more black girls in tech, we have to take a three-prong approach. We must ensure that she has a computer with the internet, that she learns how to build technology products, and that she has exposure to black women in tech. I grew up on Charlotte's West Side, an area that is historically black and historically underserved. In 1999, my mom used her income tax refund to buy our first computer, and I was amazed at what this big gray box could do. What I didn't know is that we were a little different from our neighbors. We were one of the only families in our neighborhood that had a computer with internet. Now, if we were to move back into that same neighborhood, you would think things would be a little different, right? Unfortunately, it wouldn't. We would still be one of few families that have a computer in our home with the internet access. The gulf between those who have internet access and those who do not is increasing in our nation. However, in Charlotte, the divide is still astronomical. According to the Charlotte Digital Inclusion Alliance, 56,000 families in Charlotte still lack internet access. That computer, that big gray box, I was able to explore it through periods of trial and error in the comfort of my own home. But how would our young black girls growing up in areas that do not have internet explore their own curiosity? The second part to getting more black girls in tech is making sure that they have meaningful education, technology education training. I remember coming home after school as a kid and begging my mom to pause her nightly conversations with her girlfriends so that I could connect our internet, our dial-up, remember dial-up, yeah, <laughs> to the World Wide Web of people, ideas, and MySpace. It, okay, so I, some people remember MySpace, right? But for those of you who don't remember MySpace, MySpace predated Facebook, and it allowed you to customize what your page looked like. I was excited to change the code so I could have a little Bow Wow as my background image. Um, in fact, I remember having little sticky notes up on my wall so that I could have code that I remembered so that I could be able to embed those pictures and embed his latest, greatest song. Now, MySpace's goal wasn't to teach me how to code, right? But it served as this, as this young black girl's gateway into computing and allowed me to fall in love. Imagine if our young black girls had intentional computer science training similar to what I had when I was growing up and the lengths that they could go to. It would allow them to have a better economic plan. The average tech salary is $91,422. Teaching our young black girls Microsoft Word as a class will not allow them to get to this salary. Teaching them about user-centered design, algorithms, how to create games, that will allow them to have a salary like this. It's no one-sided solution. It's gonna take a commitment from the technology industry, our school districts, and community partners to make sure that our young black girls receive quality technology training with culturally relevant curriculum so that they can fall in love with tech the way that I did. Now, the third thing that we have to do is ensure that our young black girls have role models that look like them. Perhaps one of the greatest things that happened to me when I, excuse me, perhaps one of the greatest things that happened to me was when I enrolled at Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology. Not only was it there that I learned how to code, it was also there that I had my first exposure to black women in tech. I had strong, beautiful black women teaching me how to code. In fact, I always remember Mrs. Suggs, our IT admin, anytime anything went wrong with our computing, everyone wanted to know, where's Mrs. Suggs? They had to find Mrs. Suggs. And after a few years, I decided, hey, I want to be Mrs. Suggs. I want to be the woman that you call when your technology goes down. And now my grandma expo exploits me, and she calls me when her iPhone goes down. But in any case, <laughs> <laughs> our young black girls need role models like this. Because when I enrolled at NC State, and when I was in these internships with Women who were great but didn't look like me, I knew that I could 
go ahead and push through because I had that early exposure of women who looked like me. What I also knew was that I would have to serve as this example as well. And so I decided to create my own organization. And through that, I was able to meet Amia and Harmony. I met them both when they were in the sixth grade. I taught them how to code, and I exposed them to my friends in tech, and I took them to technology companies around our city. When they decided to go to high school, they went to Philip O'Berry Academy of Technology. Amia, who is now a freshman at Philip O'Berry, knows how to code in two different programming languages. She earned an all expenses paid trip to Facebook's headquarters out in California, and also has the goal to teach other girls how to code. Harmony, who is a junior at the middle college, desires to be a user experience designer, just like I was when I worked at Apple's headquarters in California, designing and doing research on applications that every single employee has to use every single day. It was because of their exposure to me that Harmony and EMEA are now going to be producers of technology instead of consumers. Industry professionals around the world would agree that we need more skilled technologists. Not only do we need more skilled technologists, we need more diverse skilled technologists. It's not enough to put iPads and Chromebooks in every classroom, coupled with a few posters of Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs. Our young black girls don't see men like Mark and Steve when they go home. They see women like me, women who have pushed past the odds to make a life for themselves. It's not enough to let our young black girls spend hours and hours consuming YouTube videos when we could be creating, showing them how to create YouTube videos or the next YouTube. We have to be intentional about making sure our young black girls not only have access to a computer with the internet, quality technology training, and exposure to black women in tech. So I ask you again, what if we take a young black girl growing up in an underserved community, give her a computer with the internet, teach her how to produce her own technology, and expose her to black women in tech. You influence the future by creating more creators, like Harmony, like Amia, and like me. Thank you. <laughs>